In this video, you'll learn what JSON is and how it's used. And we'll go over some real-world examples. Thanks for checking out this video. If you're just getting started or even thinking about starting a career in web development, you're in the right place. I upload new videos every week. Hit subscribe and the bell to get notified. Stick around to the end where we'll go over some real-world examples of JSON in action. All right, let's get started. So what is JSON? Well, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It's based on JavaScript object literals. It's a data representation format. XML is also a data representation format. But you'll see the advantages of JSON. JSON is also lightweight and it's used for storing and transporting data. It's often used to exchange data between client and server. JSON is self-describing. It's easy to read and understand. And it integrates with JavaScript since it's based on JavaScript object literals, but it's also supported in most other languages. They all have parsers for JSON. In web development, you're going to come across JSON. So get familiar and comfortable with it. Next, let's look at some JSON data types. So within JSON, we can have strings, hello world wrapped in quotation marks, that would be a string. And we can have numbers. So a number can be a whole number, a decimal, it can be negative, and even scientific notation. Another data type is Boolean, so that is true or false. JSON can contain arrays, so an array is an ordered list of values, so one, two, three, separated by commas. And then we have an array of strings, hello and world, separated by a comma. Another data type is objects. Objects are unordered collections of key value pairs. So you'll have a key and a value. So in this example, the key is age and the value is 30. And lastly, we have the null data type, which is just empty or blank. Now let's talk about a few rules. JSON must contain key value pairs. And you have to use double quotes around the key and strings. And the data must fall into one of the JSON data type categories. Data is separated by commas, curly braces hold objects, and square brackets hold arrays. All right, now this is the last slide. After this, we'll get into some hands-on. But first, let's go over a quick example. So here we see we start the JSON with curly braces. Our first key is name in quotation marks. We separate the key and the value by a colon. And then our value here is John. And John is a string, so that must be wrapped in quotation marks. And then we separate our data with commas. So we use a comma, and the next key would be age. And the value is 20. Since 20 is a number, it does not require quotation marks. And we have a comma, and our next key is likes cats. And the value is true. Boolean values, true and false, do not require quotation marks. Our next key is grocery list and the value here is an array. So arrays are ordered lists, and they start with square brackets. So this is an array of strings. Our first item is milk, separated by a comma, and then the next item is eggs. Then our last key is address. The value of address is an object. So objects, arrays, and values can all be nested. So within this object, and again, objects are unordered collections of key value pairs. Within this object, we have a key of street, and its value is 1231st Street. The next key is city, with a value of Houston. And the next is state, with a value of Texas. And then we close the object with curly braces, and then end the JSON with another curly brace. All right, now let's get some hands-on. I've opened up a blank folder and we're going to create a data.json file. All right, now within the JSON file, we'll start inputting some data. So we have to open and close with curly braces. And then we'll just do something simple. We'll do a name and that will be John and then comma to separate our data. And the next one will be age and we'll say 30. And I'm going to save that. This is a very basic example of JSON data. Now to see this in action, let's create an HTML file. So we'll create index.html. And I'll generate an HTML template using Emmet. Uh, exclamation enter. And we'll just name this uh, JSON example. And then in the body, we are just going to put a script tag. Now remember we said that JSON is based on JavaScript object literals. So we could take this JSON data here, name and age. And in this script, we could say let data equal 
and then we could say console log data. So I've got live server installed, so I'm running that. Let me rearrange these windows. So now you see in, in Chrome, in the console, it's giving us the object, name and age. So in a JavaScript object literal, you don't have to have these quotation marks around the keys. So let me save that, and you'll see that it still works without the quotation marks. But in JSON, you do have to have those quotation marks on the keys. So watch what happens when I take them out. VS Code doesn't know what to do with that. It's telling us that something is wrong. So we'll put those back. And then here in the console, if we wanted to just see the name, we could do data.name. We'll save that. Now you'll see in the console, it's giving us just the name. And if we wanted age, we could just get the age. So instead of having the data in the script, generally our data is going to come from another source. So how do we get the JSON file into our website? Well, let me comment this out. And there are a couple of ways to do that. You could use a XML HTTP request, or you could use fetch. I'm just going to use fetch. But the point of this video isn't how we're getting the data in. So we're going to fetch the data.json file, and then we will get our response. And we will process the JSON, and then we'll have our JSON data, and we will do something with it. So let's console log that. And again, We'll just do the object initially. So let me save that. So now you see in the Chrome console, we have the object, the name, and the age. And again, if we just wanted the name, we could do json.name and save that. And now we just have the name, or we could do age and save that. And now we just have the age. Okay, so now let's look at something a little more advanced. We'll go back to our JSON file. Let's add some more data to this file. So we'll add um, address, and the address is going to be an object. And so within address, we need the street, and the value of that will be a string, one, two, three, first street. Then we need the city, and that would be Houston, and the state. Texas. So now let me save that and we'll go back to our HTML file. And now if we want the address, we could change this to address. And you see that it gives us the entire object. So it gives us the city, state, and street. So now with an address, we could say, what is the street address? So we'll say street. And now it just gives us the street. And we could do the same with city and state. So let's go back to our data. Let's add some more data. We will add a shopping list. And so shopping list is going to be an array. This is going to be an array of strings. So our first string is milk. We separate each piece of data within the array with commas. So the second value will be eggs. And the third value will be bread. All right, let me save that. And if we go back to our index.html, or we could do json.shoppinglist. And now the console shows us the array, three values within the array. First value is milk, the second is eggs, and the third is bread. So again, arrays are ordered lists. They have indexes, and they are zero-based indexes. The index of the first value is going to be zero, and then one, two, and so on. So now if we wanted to just get the first value within the array, after shopping list, we could do square bracket and then zero. And then that targets the value with an index of zero. So I'll save that. And now it shows us the first value, which is milk. And I can change that to one. And now it shows us eggs and two. And there's bread. So what we could do is instead of console logging these, I'm going to add a UL with an ID of list. And that's all that I'll do there. We can comment this line out. So here let's create a variable, and this is going to be our list. And that's going to equal json.shoppinglist. Okay, so now we also need um, a variable of output, and we'll set that to blank. 
and then we will use a for loop to iterate through each item in the shopping list. This video isn't meant to explain JavaScript and for loops, but I'll briefly explain it as we go. So we're going to do for, and then we'll do a variable of i for index, and we'll set that equal to zero initially. And then we'll say if i is less than our list.link, so as long as we haven't run out of list items, then i++. Plus plus. So that is going to increment i from 0 to 1, 2, 3, and so on. For now, for each item in our shopping list, we're going to add to our output string. So we'll say output plus equals, and we're going to add an li. And then the list with an index of i, and then close the li. So here we're targeting our list with an index of i. So whatever i is, initially it'll be 0, and it's going to increment each time until it gets to the end of the list. So now after our for loop is over, now we're going to do document .get element by id. That will be our list in our HTML, the UL. And we'll target the inner HTML, and we'll make that equal to output. All right, let me save that. And now you see our list. So let's go back to our data file. And now what if we have multiple users? Well, we could modify this a bit. And let's say we have a key of users. And this is going to be an array. And so let me cut this out. Within our users array, we will have objects. So now our first user would be John, which we already had and that is within this object here. So we can add another user. After this object, we would use a comma, and then input another object. And we'll do name, and the name will be Mary, and her age will be 25. Her address would be street uh, 543, second street, and city, we'll say Dallas, and state, Texas. All right, and then after that, we had our shopping list, and our shopping list is an array. And for her shopping list, she had chips, milk, and apples. All right, now let me save that. And we're gonna get an error here because we haven't defined what we want to do with this new list. So I'm going to temporarily comment out this bottom portion. And so now let's just look at our JSON and see what that gives us. Now we see we have the users array. Two items in the array, and within the array are two objects. One of John and one with Mary. Let me uncomment these. So now our list would be json.users so now let's target our users change all of this to users each user we have our output we're iterating through each user and we're going to add a list item for each one and then add that to the inner html so if i save this you'll see object object because we need users dot something we'll just do name now i'll save that and now we'll see John and Mary. All right, so now let's look at a real world example. So there is a website that provides placeholder JSON data. So you can use this in your development to test your project. So let me show you what that looks like. So in our fetch, I'm going to use the address json placeholder.typeycode.com slash users. And let's comment all of this out for now and we just want to console log the JSON and see what we have. So that gives us an array of 10 users. Within each user, we have an address, which is an object of key value pairs. We have company with a couple of values. We have email, ID, name, phone, user, and website. So we could iterate through these the same as we did the others. Okay, so let me comment this and uncomment these, and we'll do the same thing. We'll iterate through these users. 
And so this time it's not defined by a user. This is just an array. So we're not going to do json.users. We'll just do json and then everything else can remain the same. So let me save that. Now we get our list of usernames. So that'll be it for this video. If it helped you, a like is appreciated. Hit subscribe and the bell. And check out my channel. There's more content there and new content every week. Thanks for watching.